This is Advanced Algebra Lesson 8.5, Products with Radicals. And the big idea of this lesson is that the product of the nth roots of non-negative numbers is the nth root of the product of the numbers. So before we get started, I'd like to just recall your um, some information that we learned in some previous lessons that the square root of a times b was the same as the square root of a times the square root of b. And basically, this is an extension of the power of product postulate because this could be the same as a times b raised to the one-half power, which is the same as a to the one-half times b to the one-half. So now, if we think about it like that, we go to the root of a product theorem. And it says for any non-negative real numbers, x and y, and any integer, n greater than or equal to 2, then we can say that xy raised to the power of 1 over n is the same as x to the 1 over n times y to the 1 over n powers. Or we can go in radical form, the nth root of xy is the same as the nth root of x times the nth root of y. So I'd like to have you try this example, and I'd like you to do it actually without your calculator. The third root of 320 times the third root of 25. We could say that that is the third root of 320 times 25, and that is the third root of 8,000, and we know that the third root of 8,000 is 20. Let's look at another example. We're going to once again assume that x is greater than or equal to 0, and we're going to perform the multiplication of the fifth root of 8 times x squared times the fifth root of 4x to the eighth. So the way we're going to approach that is that this could equal the fifth root of 32 times the tenth root of x. So we know that the fifth root of 32 is 2, and the fifth root of x to the 10 is x to the second. This next section uh, is about simplifying radicals. In general, to simplify an nth root, we rewrite the expression under the radical sign as a product of perfect nth powers and other factors. Then we can apply the root of a product theorem. For the first example, we're going to suppose that a is greater than or equal to b or to 0 and b is greater than or equal to 0. And we're going to simplify the third root of 125, a to the 12th, b to the 27th. So following what I stated up here, we're going to write under the radical our values as perfect third roots. So if we look at 125, that is really 5 to the third power. And if we look at a to the 12th, we can have that as a to the third times a to the third times a to the third times a to the third. And when we look at b to the 27th, we could actually write that b to the third, but several times, so I'm not going to write it all out. We could write 9b to the thirds. So. It, to make things a little bit shorter, we look at this, 125, the third root of 125 is 5, that can come out. And as we look here at the a to the 12th, there was 1, 2, 3, 4 a to the thirds in that, so I'm going to pull out 4 a's. And we didn't want to write 9 b to the thirds, but we know that there are 9 of those under the radical, so I can pull out b to the ninth. We're going to look at the fifth root of 96y to the 11th. Now when we look at this, it's not going to be a perfect, clean answer here. Not everything is going to be able to come out from under the radical. So what I want to do is I want to break things up under the radical into groups of fifths. So, or numbers that are going to be perfect fifth roots. So if I think about 96, and if I could think about different numbers that are factors of 96, I know that 32 times 3 makes 96, and I know that the fifth root of 32 is 2. So I'm going to keep 32 times 3 under there. And now if I look at y to the 11th, y to the, the fifth root doesn't come out nice and even with that, 
but it does with y to the tenth. So if I make this y to the tenth times y to the first, I now have the equivalent of y to the eleventh, but it's in things that are going to come out nicely with the fifth root. So the fifth root of thirty-two is two, and the fifth root of y to the tenth is y squared, so that leaves me with 2y squared times the fifth root of 3y. So that's one way to simplify our radicals. I would like you to try examples 4, 5, 9, and 12, and when we come to class next time we will discuss those and we will even do a few more of these examples. This concludes Lesson 8-5.